Oh, hello. We're finally here. It's time for the Evil Kill Team Hobby Challenge results show. We had loads of entries for our Evil Kill Team Hobby Challenge. So for those of you that aren't sure what this is all about and have just clicked on the video randomly, every so often on the channel we do a hobby challenge where we challenge the Tabletop Impulse community to create a kill team um, to a certain theme. And oh, this time around the theme was Evil. So we're going to start with uh, a couple of entries from myself and Mr. Zimbad, who are not obviously eligible to win our own competition, okay? Me and Zimbad and Mrs. T.I. do the judging for the Evil Kill Team, or for all the hobby challenges. So these are my uh, Night Lords. Don't ask me about how much money I spent on Games Workshop Skull Packs to make the display base. Um, obviously, I'm not going to spend too long talking about my own team, but I'm pretty pleased with them. Um, I think they look pretty cool. And you'll have a chance to play against them if you are coming to the Warhammer World Kill Team Tournament weekend coming up. Or the weekday Warhammer at Warhammer World in August. Or indeed the um, Turning Point Tactics Tournament uh, in the first weekend in September. So, all these things. All these things. Let's have a look at Mr. Zimbad. So, obviously Zimbad is uh, he's an amazing artist. He really is. And it's just his uh you know it's just a shame that he's kind of not eligible to uh win uh or, or be placed or get an honorable mention or any of these things by virtue of being one of the judges and he's probably the judge with the most sort of painting uh clout some things i really like about these miniatures here so we've got the 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 fire coming out here i forgot the names of all these big fellas but the fire here with some object source lighting which really that draws my eye that's really amazing We've got the texture on the skin on this big guy over here. Again, that's really, really, really good looking stuff. Um, I really like the the fact that you've got kind of this pinkish, almost human looking skin tone around the edges of the wound here on this fella. Um, there just really is so much to enjoy on these uh, miniatures. A uh, big fan. Uh, a shame if you've seen one of my recent videos that I, I think maybe... The Galapox Infected will no longer be a, a legal kill team in Games of Kill Team, but they're a fantastically well-painted uh, display piece, and they definitely uh, meet the the brief of being um, evil. All right, let's let's move on. So, Gruesome Orchid. So, Gruesome Orchid here has done, I believe, it is a. Is it a Tau kill team? Um, no, a Crute kill team with the two dogs. It's, yeah, it's a proxy kill team. I believe it was, um, is it, is it, is it, I'm not sure. I remember at the time looking at it and thinking it was really cool. It's a really cool set of conversions. I really like the, um, the, the painted, um, the coats with the purple leather. I think that's really cool. Getting coloured leather to look and scan and look look right is is difficult. So that looks really cool. They certainly look evil and sinister. Um, you know, I've looked at a couple of Necromunda gangs in my time and have thought about doing them as proxies for other things. So that's um, you know, it's it's a cool idea. Um, really well executed. Love the subtle tones in the leather. I'm struggling a little bit to just quite read what. They, I think it must be Fast Orc Kimban, right? I'm just struggling a little bit to read exactly what they are, but if they're, if they're Fast Orc Kimban, what's a little servo skull guy for? But they got a sniper, they got a dagger guy, they must have got rifles, they got two doggos. Uh, they, they look really cool, though. Um, for whatever kill team they turn out to be, rules wise, but they look awesome. Um. Yeah, I, I, I love the colour scheme as well. The purple leather and the white guns and then also the white flash on the head. It's, it's, it's cool. It's striking. I would have just... I would have put black rather than dark grey around the base rims just so they popped off a little more. But that's that's me. I'm just obsessed with black base rims. If you want to win a hobby challenge, you've got to have black base rims. That's not really a rule. But it is something I'm going to say every time I see a, a non-black uh, base rim. Uh, Tron. So Tron did two kill teams. Um, he's done here both sides of uh, Nightmare, right? There's two people that did both sides of Nightmare as their entry. Uh, so we got a Mandrakes and we got the Night Lords. 
both in um, sort of box art colours. Really like the the the, the fades on the um, the fire uh, on the mandrakes, right? The green the green flames. That looks really cool. And a big fan of the uh, the lightning on on the night lords. If anything, what's letting this entry down a little bit is he's making the same mistake that I usually make, right? Painting the box art colours, um, which means that it just struggles to stand out in a field in a, in what is a very competitive field. Um, there are going to be those rewards for creativity as well as execution, and and I'm and I'm telling on myself here because exactly what I do, right? I execute like the the what's on the boxes, so it's not a very creative thing, and so it's all on execution. Whereas as other as we'll see going on, there's other people who sort of take that box of being really good at the execution, and they've also been really well creative with their own with their own stuff. But these are really cool. I, I enjoy them. Um, you know, uh, a, a really good paint job. I think the, the bases on the um, the night lords are a bit kind of lackluster for me like and i clearly tron knows how to do really good basing because the basing on the the mandrakes is is really top shelf so um maybe maybe a little note there for, for that just to, but if what you're going for is that in an urban environment there's a limit to how much basing that you can do it's one of those things where sometimes the basing scheme that you want because in your mind's eye for the environment you want your guys to be playing in isn't actually the best basing scheme from an artistic point of view. And sometimes you have those things grappling in your mind. We're going to have a little look at Nick B underscore all the meats. Uh, who's also done Night Lords. So these look really cool. Um, you know, painted all the trim nice and neatly. Very, very good. Um, I like the red basing. It's kind of a good contrast with the rest of the Night Lord. Very, so this is the opposite, right? This is very much a, what is the textbook thing? We've got loads of blue. Oh, we'll do red bases. And they do look good, and they do pop off, and they do look smart. What would I like to see that elevate this a little bit more? Um, you know, some, some lightning on the, on the, on the Night Lords, right? It's a shame not to attempt that, I think. Um, and just on the, on the cloak, on the fella in the foreground there, you can see a little bit of the pooling of the wash. Right, so maybe a, a, a couple of a glaze back over that with the skin colour just to try and get rid of some of that pooling or just carefully looking at the uh, wash as it dries and like pulling some of the wash off with the with the with, with, with the brush just to just to avoid those um like spots of pooling that you've got there that kind of look weird because they're not even at the bottom of the I'll show you what I mean, hang on. These here, they're not even at the bottom of the thing, so it's not even where the gravity it just looks a bit odd uh to me. Uh, but I do really like this plasma gun with its like lava effect where it's going from kind of a dark red up to a white. That's really cool. Really, really cool. Uh, elephant bat. So elephant bat didn't listen to my plea to include one simple photograph that I could put on a slide. Um, so that's upsetting. But apart from that, um, these are really nicely painted models. Uh, it's hard for me to kind of... I'm, I'm sure we're looking at the same four models over and over again. So it's quite hard for me to kind of work out what's going on. But they look really cool. I think these are, he said, loosely based on the White Walkers from Game of Thrones, which is cool. Uh, I really like the work he's done on the, the his weapons, where they've done them as like ice weapons with a bit of a two-tone thing going on. That's that's awesome, right? Uh, not a fan of the... I think they'd look better with black base rims. I'm going to say it every single time. Uh, not a fan of these light, light space or grey kind of base rims, but that's just me. This one has a white base rim. Like, what's going on here? Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I'm, it's a bit of a meme, but I'm going to pick on the non-black base rims. So, uh, but, but you know, really well painted, really creative, like really different with the sort of jade weaponry, which I like. Um, yeah, they look really, really. They they almost remind me of, and it'd be interesting to see a kit bash of them with the. Um, the vampires from Warcry, the kind of uh, nature vampires, they, they, they kind of, they got a bit of a similar vibe going on. So that's cool. Yeah. We're going to look at uh, Aroboros. Let's see, Aroboros understood to do one one picture, so that's, and, and black base rims, you see. So Aroboros did a really interesting thing where he was looking at the traditional um evil doers color palette from like western comics so if you think about um you know you like your marvel comics 
traditionally like bad guys would tend to be in purple, orange, and um, green, right? And then good guys are in blue, yellow, and red. Uh, and that just was one of the rules. Of course, then the Incredible Hulk's whole thing is despite being a, a good guy, he's in the bad guy colours because he's kind of a bad guy. It's a whole thing. I'm not really a comics guy. That's really the limit of my knowledge. I really like a lot of things about these. I love the bases. Um, he's clearly learned from from going for going from his um you know his previous he did like a rust effect Necrons kill team that was ended up being a bit much. And these um are that rust effect kind of technique. I think perfected. So that's really cool. They're really good, really striking bases. I really like, and I keep being drawn back to this holster. Um, you know, he's got a really good kind of fade going on that with a really naturalistic highlight where there's a, a lot of light on this top edge fading down to uh, almost black at the bottom. Um, so that looks really cool. Uh, some of the other bits of the miniatures look a bit more flat. I'd love to have seen this level of technique, right? And this kind of really cool contrast played over the whole team because the the orange is weirdly generally less well done than the green so all of the orange um like the the almost prison jumpsuit looking part underneath that looks a bit flat but i really like the way this green comes out i generally like this really like turquoise green it only seems to be it's on the leader here and there's a bit on the gun um but it's really it's, it's and there's a bit in the, the hand here of the patriarch it's really it's come out really nicely that green uh accent color that he's used which is really nice um but the orange in contrast across them looks a bit flat the bone looks pretty cool for the armor um yeah that's pretty cool and the face have come out really well now the patriot doesn't show very much in this picture he did post another picture in um another place on the discord so you can get a better idea the patriarch actually has like clear resin over him so he has like um slimy like spittly slimy goo like all over him you can see dripping off his tongue and dripping off his feet and it looks quite bad in this particular photograph i think the camera's kind of trying to read it as white and so it looks a bit like he's got white white stripes here but i've seen another photograph of it and you have sent a word for it or join the discord to check it out right but it looks um it does look quite cool uh in in a, in a slightly different lighting environment which is one of the struggles right of doing a virtual painting competition like this where people are at least partially being judged on their photography uh skills as well so big fan of these um i think just uh, it's weird if we can try just to refine all the colors to the same standard as the most refined bits that 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 would really elevate the whole thing so like the, again the, this is a really this here really good example however effect whether it's just a a dry brushing technique or washes or whatever you've done this is really cool if we could appreciate that level of high contrast across all of the armor and all of the orange then you'd have something really uh mind-blowing i think um yeah um elephant bat again so elephant bat did two he also painted the um the other half of um of a uh, nightmare much like tron did but he did them as two separate entries i've given him two separate slides because i was feeling uh charitable so he's done kind of they are night lords but they're night lords with a um the palette change they, they, they look like player two night lords a little bit okay so they're a really light blue with um a sort of white uh yeah i don't think it is metallic is it it's like a, a ceramic white uh trim going on which is pretty cool again i really like this power axe that's that 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 that, that, I re that, that that's good that's really good um and I like the designs on the armor with the lightning and stuff. My brain is noticing that the legs here haven't had the trim colored in. Which, um, <laughs> you know, creative decision, sure. Uh, but it's weird because, like, this glove, um, right, has the trim. And this glove doesn't have the trim. So it does feel... Now, he is the leader, so maybe he just gets more trim. But it feels to me like uh, Mr. Elephant Bat gave up doing the Chaos Trim part way through um you know we can't blame i mean this glove here the, the so the, this guy has the trim as well no trim on the gloves here trim on the gloves here like what's it about what's it about and none of them have the leg trim so um mark you know don't don't slack on your trims um i know that it's like annoying and painful but if i had to do it so do you that's there we go that's the rule but i really like the freehand lightning it's got much better than my freehand lightning uh, ever did right um especially like on this leg here as on the leg panels on this leg here he's done a really really good job of the of the lightning so big fan of that 
And a uh, yeah, interesting, interesting colour kind of flip on the um on the classic Night Lords take. I'm a big fan of that. Big fan. Sully uh Sully's done for me some um beastmen. Okay, and Sully has, I think, a little bit been let down by his photography. This was actually his second attempt at doing the photography. And I think I get the impression he's still not happy with how they look on the photograph versus how they, they look to him in real life. He's done a very kind of limited palette, naturalistic toned um, beastman uh, team. You know, they they look like cows, right? Or, or bulls or goats or whatever they're supposed to be. They're very naturalistic looking, which is cool. Very limited palette, which makes the... Um, the eyes so obviously amazingly quickly drawn to the, the smoke on the toxhorn's gas grenade, which is for my money like the best part. Like it's also replicated with the, the leader's plasma pistol as well. But I I really like the the smoke here. It looks amazing. Okay, and it really pops out against the kind of browns and reds of the rest of the team. Um, I think it would have been. He's got it on two miniatures. I think composition wise, it might be nice to to try and. It's hard. I don't quite know where you would have done it, but to try and work out that green, that that pop colour, um, onto a few more of the miniatures here and there. I'm not sure exactly how I would have done that, but it, it's just that a lot of the other pieces are like this is the best piece. This is the best piece in the in in the team, right? And a lot of the pieces are looking at they're missing something. It's interesting to me that the wizard has a to me different palette, right? He's got like a more pale skin, I guess, to try and represent. He's a bit older is that what's happening but yeah really really cool really really cool i like the nice piece of terrain as well really simple uh sort of two-tone dark and, and purple there it's, it's cool we got turtor 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 so turtor has converted up some um i think they are ultimately beastmen these are beastmen aren't they because you've got the guy with the little drum yeah, and you've got a guy with a banner. Yeah, and mostly they got combat weapons, and you've got the leader with the plasma pistol. These are beastmen. And these are beastmen converted up out of um, 40k um, world, world, world Eater uh, cultists, right? And they look pretty cool, you know? Uh, the bases look really well done, okay, with the snow and the blood and the urban environment. There's a lot of thought going into those bases. Um photography the photography's letting it down a little bit which is the thing is this guy holding just a whole ass brain like i'm gonna hit you i mean i i, I don't know these models very well to be fair but I'm, I'm just gonna beat you up with this brain um no i love the blood splatter as well um best piece of feedback i can give on this is to work on the the composition of the photography side of things, which is it's something I struggle with as well, but it's one of those things when you're entering a, an online painting challenge that it, it can let down you trying to showcase what you're uh, trying to showcase. Love the flame. Uh, I would have tried to push... I would have tried to push the contrast in the flame a little bit more, so I would have tried to push a bit more bright yellow into the bottom and a, uh, of it, really, and a bit more red. I mean, it's gone into... He's got a little bit of black across the top for smoke, but I would have put a little bit of more red across the top. A little bit more yellow across the bottom. This flame's looking a bit homogenous for me, um, otherwise. But uh, little things. Um, but no, a really good entry from Terz. I really like it, and it would just be really it's refining that photography, if possible, that would would improve uh, that the the overall experience. Which I realise isn't painting feedback, right? But it's again, like I keep saying, it is a a pretty valid concern when it comes to um, online online painting competitions. We're going to go to Alex Russ. Oh, I love these. So, Alex Russ has done um, Compendium. Compendium, like, Death Guard. Uh, not uh, Compendium Demons, right? Why not? You know? Um, and he's done just two fire teams of uh, Plague Bearers. And they look really good. And there's loads of conversions coming there. So, I think we got some of the mutants from... Um, is this mutant from Galapox Infected? Just sitting here being a plague bearer, right? And this model is from somewhere else as well. And that, they look really cool. Um, I can't even fully identify where all these models have come from. Um, but they've clearly got like 40k elements to them with the weapons and stuff. They, they're really nice. You know, they're not the stock plague bearer miniatures at all. So I'm a big fan um, of the conversion. I'm a big fan of the sort of the subtle paint job 
right, there's nothing that jumps out of you, but they've all got subtle variations in tone of skin, as as you would expect from, like, a gang of different demons or possessed humans or whatever look he's going for. So, big fan of that. Um, big fan of the consistency across the team in terms of the bases and the bones and things like that. I really like them. They're very really cool. Um, yeah, really cool. Would love to have seen a work-in-progress shot of these before they were painted and a thing that goes through and breaks down where all the parts are from because I'm looking at them and, I, and they're not just the Plague Bearer miniatures and they're not just Blackstone Fortress miniatures they're clearly some quite interesting collection of miniatures there and conversion stuff so they're cool we do have a couple of duplicates right so there's the axe guy there and there's another axe guy in the back so clearly he's had to kind of pull things from different places but big fan big fan of that Alex Hulk X90, aka Honest Minis now, so I'm looking forward to the uh, inevitable video on Honest Minis channel explaining the, the thought process behind these fellas. Um, Honest Minis often uses uh, older older models, and I think these are, again, these will have been converted and changed and modified so much that I am struggling to identify precisely what's gone on, um, but I um, I do love them. Uh, they they do look a bit a bit wee, right? I reckon on a kill team board they look kind of uh, <laughs> diminutive, like they've been lost in the warp for a few years. They've lost a few inches, but they look really cool, uh, and they have that really cool old school vibe. Um, and I love it's kind of it's just one color. It's green, and into that green he's worked in so much variation um, of where the the light falls. And Honest Minis has a very um, he's got a signature painting style, right? A sort of um, colourful grim dark if that even makes sense of the thing i don't know whether it, whether it does that is applied here and it looks really good um I, I i enjoy it quite a lot um i really like the objects maybe it's a bit much right but this plasma gun looks like it's about to explode it looks like it's like one step from just going like in that guy's face which is probably fitting with the nurgle fellas because maybe they don't maintain their weapons the the best um, but it's like a lot of objects on sliding but it works right i like it i think the classic pointing power fist which is perhaps a little big for the rest of the miniature that he's putting on but it still it looks pretty cool uh i love this guy with the horn just coming straight out of the middle of his head uh really nice team um you know there are other competitions where these would have come in the top three easily but like the the field was just really, really strong uh, this time round, but they look really good. Really, really good. We're really, really proud of them. Um, and, uh, yeah, I hope that you enjoy uh, enjoyed the hobbying that you did on them, right? Uh, Mage Tom. So, I need to talk about Major Tom's entry in a little bit more detail. So, Major Tom was the subject of a dare by Mr. Nightfall, right? Because we were talking in the members' channel about... We were talking in the members' channel about which... Um, which teams lent themselves to being evil kill teams and which teams were like not evil and Major Tom's like I can do evil tau and Nightfall's like no you can't do evil tau evil tau aren't evil and I'm like well you could do them like fast riders are kind of evil tau and we started talking about like tau if they've gone really off like apocalypse now style if they've been alone and cut off from the rest of society and these kind of feral tau and Major Tom's like yeah I'm gonna do that Right, and then, um, I don't know quite know how it ended up, but it ended up being some kind of bet between, or, not, Nightfall preferred to be referred to as a dare, um, not sure of the nuance there, but basically, if Major Tom actually did his Apocalypse Tau and a Devilfish, Nightfall said he was going to come along and donate, like, um, half a dozen memberships on, um, the next live stream that I do, so... I'm going on holiday now, or as you're watching this, I'm on holiday. I'll have the date of that live stream when Nightfall has apparently promised to give out loads of extra memberships to people um, at the end of the video. So if you would like a free membership for um, for a month, you can tune into that live stream and have a decent chance of, of, of being awarded one. Now, to talk about Major Tom's actual, like, painting, there are some things in here that I think are really amazing. So, the drones, like, they're just... Because they he want to have that vibe. They've been isolated, and they've just gone wrong after a bit of time. And he's really chipped and damaged the, the edges of the um, the edges of the drone there. And here, I, I really... I, I love the blood on the face of this towel as well. It's just completely gone off the reservation. Um, the barbed wire. All the things he's chosen to highlight in his thing are all pretty amazing um other than that you know it's a solid paint job overall obviously he's done an entire tank as well which which 
I hate painting tanks. So he's done an entire tank, and that's impressive in its own right, just in terms of the extra effort. Um, yeah. But a really cool idea with some thoughtful little modifications on it. Big, big, big fan of that, Major Tom. Right, now we're getting into... We've got a couple of honourable uh, mentions. So I really like Bernhardt's. Um, I, I really like the paint scheme and the basing and everything he's done. Um, prefer the ones on the bottom with the black base rims, to be totally fair with you. Bernhardt, not sure what's going on with the base rims on the one on the top. Maybe he was struggling to tell his specialists from the sculpts. We do know that these have a bit of an issue with their sculpts being a bit homogenous. Um, but I just really like these. I really like the, 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 the skirts, right? The, the fact they got the kind of some brighter bits and some darker bits. Um, and the, and the color scheme is really original with the pink fire. Uh, they, and they, they just spoke to me. And obviously he's got an eye for gameplay. He's also done the hair colors. They're a bit Power Rangers, aren't they? He's also done the hair colors on the, on the specials as well. But I was prepared to give, uh, I gave Bernhardt an honorable mention because for me, uh, not for the other judges, but for me, they were in contention for top three. But I, I was overruled. I was overruled quite quickly. But I, 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 I don't know. They just, do you know when something just speaks to you and you can't totally articulate why, even though articulating why is kind of my job. I also really liked uh, Pallid Mask's um, stuff, which I still think is really, really good. Um, obviously, the photography is, is helping, right? It is sympathetic photography for the style of thing that he has uh, chosen to done. But I really like it's got almost that kind of, um, I was going to say painting quality, but like a picture painting. Like a, it's got a sort of, um, it looks like a, a oil on canvas to me sort of thing. I love the eye here, the glowing eye. That looks amazing. That almost looks like you've got an LED in there or something. I, I really like the high contrast and the highs and lows. Um, obviously, there's something going on here with the lighting and the photography, I guess, to, to lend that thing. Uh, people do say that taking photos on black background is cheating, but I really like these pallid masks, and I really uh, I, 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 I thought they should be a bit higher up, so I give them an honourable mention as well. Right, so now we're going to get into the top three. There's only three left to go. Um, and so in third place... And all the people who have had entries or haven't put their entries in are now on the edge of their seats, right? So in third place, we have um, Mr. Matthew Poole. So there was a lot of argument between third and second, um, you know, because uh, they were really close. Really close. And in the end, we settled on the order we did, or I... I, I, I I broke the deadlock. I broke the deadlock. There was a there was a deadlock going on between um, other judges. One thought it was one way. One thought it was the other way. I had to come in and go right. Well, we were doing this. Um, there are things about Matthew Poole's entry that are phenomenal. Um, you know the, the 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 wing, right? Look at it. Like it's amazing. The fade on all the fire. It's it's amazing. Right, and then there are th there are things that I think are amazing, and the bases look amazing. But then, like the 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 dresses on the actual the cloth looks a bit it's it, it's solid. There's nothing wrong with it, but there's a little bit of tide mark going on, right? Like like down here, a little bit of tide mark, and they're just not as good as, for example, Bernhardt's actual like cloth. So it it, it was a really difficult one because this is exceptional work. Matt, right? This here is absolutely mind-blowingly. I look at it and go, wow, how's he done that? But there are some other parts that are a bit more fundamental. I, I Personally, for me, I just hold them down a little bit and put them... They got them up. But third place is still amazing. You've done really, really well. Um, and it, you know, the bits where... Like, the, the wing here is amazing. And all of the fire um, that you've got going on all of the flame effects, they all look really, really amazing as well. And I like on the weapon that you've got kind of the green grime going on on the weapon as well. I love the skin of, of the Mandrakes. And for me, really, it was just the, the skirts, or whatever you call them, kilts, tunics. Like, they didn't seem to have as much put into them as the rest of the composition. And for me, it was that bit that was, that was, that was just holding them back a little bit. All right. Um... Nightfall, second place, second place uh, with his Lamenters Death Company. So Nightfall is an absolute master of trying to serve me what I want when um, I, I run a painting competition. So for me, this is this was like peak brief because this was he take took something 
um, which wasn't necessarily evil um, in terms of the, um, you know, the, um, it's just, it's a Space Marine kill team, right? It's just a standard Space Marine kill team. But he's taken a lot of parts from the Vampire uh, Counts or uh, Soul Black Grave Lords, I should say, range, right? So you've got the wings, you've got the bat swarm, you've got the, the skulls with the candles on, you've got they're all on graveyard bases, they've all got the Blood Angels vampire heads, they've got the real hammer horror, the blood coming down the, um, the side of the face. Um, really, really lovely, really well painted. Now, we did have to argue between second and third place. Some of the other judges were like, well, is it evil in the context of 40k where actually skulls and candles and things don't necessarily denote evil? They they don't scan as evil. They look like just marines. Um, and that was a matter for interpretation and robust discussion, right, in the, the judging room. But I would say... Where we all agreed is that the pa the actual painting, the actual execution of the painting on these is phenomenal. Um, the conversion work, I think, is is amazing. Um, that cape on that bottom fella, right? The fades on the cape is, is pretty amazing. The only thing that I would say about these is, and it does kind of show, is that it would have been nice, you know, because I've done it, it would have been nice to see the freehand on the Lamenta symbol. These are, these are water slide decals. And you can see there's a little bit of decal crunch going on on this one, which is, 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 it does draw my eye and it does detract overall from what is otherwise a spectacular set of pieces. Um, I, I don't know, it's odd. I, I would like to see, like, maybe doing it by hand would be worse, but I like to see the attempt be made. Other judges in other painting competitions might mark you down for having done it and not executed it perfectly. So I understand why you kind of go, well, I'm going to use decals. Um, but, you know, the decals haven't been applied utterly perfectly, which is, like, the only negative thing. Oh, look at the smoke. The smoke on this is amazing. It's blown my mind. Uh, and the and the weathering on the on the legs. I will say, I think the yellow half of the marine is painted better than the black half of the marine. Not the black half of the marine is painted bad, but I know this is why I chose to do Lamentas myself a couple of hobby challenges ago. Yellows are actually, if you can do it, it's, like, a really good colour for showing weathering and, and chipping and stuff like that and actually black black is easier to paint but it's harder to paint to an amazingly high standard so well done knife for well deserved second place so who does that leave in first place uh only a few people will work it out it's it's going to be uh jovakin and there's a really funny story to tell with these um i almost didn't rank these in my top three at all because i basically said well i like jovakins but i'm looking at them and i think it's colored light that he's used and he's used post process you know i think he's got a red light on them to shine on from the left right he shot them in a dark room with a red light and then the other stuff is just a bit of dry brushing that he's put on um you know and then maybe just like tweak the balance in photoshop like i genuinely looked at them and was like well i mm. and then the other two judges had to convince me with little zoom ins and bits and, and and like no look at this look at this you can see this there's a, there's a tiny floor over here look at this bit look at the white here look at this bit like that it is actually all paint um and so on that basis where i looked at it and i literally thought it was cheating like i, I literally thought he had gotten a big red bulb and, and was applying like how high is that praise basically like these are amazing um they blew me away I, I am still kind of curious to see what they would look like on a gaming table under, like, the normal fluorescent light of, of a gaming table. But as they're presented there, uh, they blow my mind. They, they really, they blew my mind, as I say, to the point where I didn't think it was a real thing. I thought, oh, this is, this is, I'm being conned. This is light, this is coloured bulbs, this is uh, Photoshop, this is something else. And I had to be convinced, quite painstakingly, by both the other judges that it was actually paint and then i was like yeah, okay well in that case he's won because um he he managed to fool simple-minded me into thinking that it was just that's that's the lighting in the room where he did the photographs so yeah they look really really good they really really impressed me um yeah first place easily first place easily easily first place like well done joe okay like oh well done like well done and that brings us to the end um so final thoughts um 
an amazing set of entries. I think it's every time I say this, I think it's like the strongest set of entries that we've ever had for a hobby challenge. Every hobby challenge seems to get better and better and better and better and better. And I think the the, the brief being relatively open and saying, "Oh yeah, paint an evil kill team," was um, like contributed to the entries being. To quite a lot of people feeling that they could enter yeah i'm really pleased let me know in the comments what you think who who was your favorite who was robbed where, where are we wrong you know like let it all out won't be offended want to know where who wherever who have i not noticed who should be clearly better you know who's whose things i passed over um let me know but i'd rather you were doing that i'd rather you were telling me wrong i was wrong and that i'd miss out someone else's that was really good don't be slagging off people's entries that's not nice right don't be saying, oh, so and so's a load of rubbish. But if you wanna if you wanna highlight somebody else's work, if you wanna say the judging was wrong and that we should have made somebody else on the podium because their thing was so amazing and you want to do it positively, then that's that's very welcome. Um later this week, there's gonna be details of the next hobby challenge. It's gonna be a weird one. If you're in last night's live stream, you already know that it's gonna be a slightly weird one, but we'll have more details about that. Um don't forget we're going to have this big membership giveaway uh thanks to nightfall and major tom i guess for doing the hobby that that in that made him have to make good on his end of the a bargain uh, and that's gonna be on wednesday the 21st of august that's when that stream's gonna be because i'm going on holiday for two weeks so there's not going to be any more streams so the next live stream on the channel which will be wednesday the 21st of august there's going to be a few uh extra memberships being given away uh thanks to mr nightfall and I want to say a big thank you to the entire Table of Impulse community, without whom I couldn't do videos like this, but also especially to uh, all my members, people that pay me some money every single month just to uh, reward me for, for, for sitting doing this content for you. That's great because Google AdSense doesn't really give me any money, right? Um, but especially to Massive Crit, who is subscribed at the very highest tier, pays quite a lot of money every month, and therefore gets an individualized thanks in every single video. All right, thanks, guys. Um, I'll see you again with details of the next hobby challenge. Looking forward to that. Um, cheery, cheery, bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye, bye, -bye, bye, -bye.